Welcome to our virtual lunch and learn today. Today we have Gino Porto presenting for us. He's going to be talking about Connected Components Workbench. My name is Rachel Green. I'm the Digital Communication Specialist here at McNaught McKay Electric Company. Like I said, presenting for us today is Gino Porter, Automation Specialist out of our Charleston, South Carolina branch. And out in the comment section, ready to answer your questions today is Stuart Newton, PLC Product Manager out of our Savannah, Georgia location. We will also have a Q&A portion at the end so Gino can answer your questions in more depth at that time. And we'll be getting started shortly, but we like to allow a few minutes for attendees to join us. As you come in, let us know where you're tuning, tuning in from in the comments section. I see we have Stuart out there with us now, Mike Brennan. Hi, Pete from Greenville. Thanks for joining today. As we continue to socially distance, we're really happy to be able to bring these sessions to you live here on YouTube, making it possible for you to join us from the comfort and safety of your own homes and offices. You can always view recordings of previous virtual lunch and learns on the YouTube channel under virtual lunch and learn playlist. And we continue this series every Wednesday at noon. So join us on your lunch break when you have a chance. For anyone just joining, welcome to the virtual lunch and learn connected components workbench. Let us know where you're joining us from in the comment section. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt from Michigan. Thanks for joining. We'll be looking for your questions there in the comment section as well. And Gina will talk through some of the features of Connected Components Workbench software, including controller programming, device configuration, and integration with HMI Editor to make programming your standalone machine easier. Our specialist, Stuart Newton, will be available to respond to your questions in the comments as we go along. We'll also have a Q&A segment at the end of Gino's presentation to address those questions in more depth and to allow some time for follow-up questions. If you'd like to reach out afterward or if you have further questions for Gino, you can send us an email at macamaclive at macamac.com. Be sure to let us know which session you attended and we'll direct your questions to Gino. We have that email there on the screen and we'll have it on the screen again at the end of the presentation. Welcome, John, thanks for joining. Looks like we have quite a few viewers now. So Gino, I'm gonna pass it over to you to get started. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone around the globe joining us on our weekly Wednesday Mac and Mac YouTube Lunch and Learn series. As Rachel mentioned, today we'll be going over Connected Components Workbench, which is a software that was developed by Rockwell Automation. As far as for the agenda, we're going to open up with the introduction to the microcontrol system. These are going to be the components that um, you can use Connected Components Workbench to program, configure, and monitor. And then once we finish the microcontrol system introduction, we'll dive into CCW as a software as a whole. And then we'll conclude the presentation with a short three minute video demo with a light voiceover. Let's begin. So what is the microcontrol system? The microcontrol system is composed of several components such as the controller, which is in this case, the micro 800 controller series. For visualiz visualization, it's the panel view 800 series. For servo applications, it'll be the Kinetics 3. For AC component drives, it will be the PowerFlex 525 drives and also the PowerFlex 4M. And they also have the capability to program your component microcontrol system safety controllers and your components such as your light curtains. 
and other safety components that can be programmed, configured, controlled over the Ethernet IP network. So with these components that we just discussed on the previous slide, such as the Micro 800 controller, PowerFlex drives, et cetera, all of these pro all of these devices can be program configured, um, explore them using one software, and that's called CCW, which is short for Connected Components Workbench. Now, why is this powerful? Many years ago, or different platforms, you may have experienced that if you wanted to program your Micro 800 controller, you needed a unique software, a unique license, program that PLC. And then when it was time to program the, the drive or the VFD, you need to open up a separate set of software that might have required a different license and um, it might have uh, required you to um, maintain and update that software um, as a whole. So with the advantage of CC, the advantage of CCW is that it's one software that can touch all of your microcontrol system products. So that makes it very convenient for you to maintain one software to hold all your projects for many different devices. Again, this is a nice overlay that shows you, hey, you got different components and these different screens would show your programming, your configuration, uh, visualization. You can set up your graphical user interfaces or your GUIs, um, or if you just want to have a, a, a overview look of your project, you can see what different type of components you have on that system from a high level. So whatever you want to have a big picture view of what's on your project, or if you want to dive into the details such as the ladder logic or the code, you can do this again on one software, and that's CCW. So how do we download this CCW or Connected Components Workbench? Well, quick thing that I do is go to Google and type in CCW download. Um, but the more technical person will tell you to go to PCDC, um, Product Configuration Download Center, or Rockwell Automation, where you can download all your software, all your firmware for all your devices. And then when you land on that screen, you're going to have two options to either download the standard edition or a developer edition. Whether you download the standard edition or the developer edition, um, the software is going to ask you if you want some um, additional software and tools that come with that. And I highly encourage you to download those. And that additional software and tools will be listed here, such as firmware tools. If you wanted to have a tool to be able to manage and flash the software on your components, such as your PowerFlex 525 drive, let's say the new drive that you ordered came with the latest and greatest firmware, but with your old project, it was working on a previous uh, firmware. If you download the firmware tool, which is Control Flash, Control Flash Plus, you can be able to click the drop down natively with inside CCW. It'll open up that control flash software, which will allow you to either flash forward or backwards that device. So it's a one stop shop for you to be able to find which tool you need for the job. It makes it very intuitive. Uh, another option that you can download that is very useful that I highly recommend are the user manuals. The great thing that I like about CCW is that the user manuals for all these components can be embedded into the software, the CCW. So how is that useful? Let's say you have some type of fault or alarm that happened on your device. Again, a PowerFlex 525 drive. The fault happened to be bus, DC bus over voltage. If you're a trained engineer technician, tradesmen, you might have some experience. You may not need to look at the man. If you're younger or new to the technology or just quite not sure what's the next step to take, 
you could uh, go to that folder inside CCW, right click, and pu it'll pull up the manual, the program manual for the troubleshooting step. So it'll show you the, hey, check the DC bus level. Hey, check your AC input uh, voltage just to make sure that's too, too high. You might want to adjust your D cell times appropriately. So whatever that fault is, it will correspond into that probably 500,000 page manual pinpointing to where you need to be looking at. So that can reduce the troubleshooting time, can reduce the amount of downtime that you have, which can inevitably save your company a lot of dollars. And then also just like all your other Rockwell software, there's some sample code that you can pull down with it so you can use for examples or you can pull and use it for your own projects. So it's very convenient. So again, what's the difference between the standard edition of CCW, CCW and the developer? Well, the, probably the most relevant thing that you guys want to know is that the standard edition is free to download. Yes, that is free. Not too often you can say that um, Rockwell Automation it's giving out free stuff. Yes, they are CCW um, is that you can download that for free online, like we mentioned before on PCDC, or you can have your distributor uh, mail you a, a CD-ROM disk where you can load it into your computer and download from there. But I'm not sure how useful that would be because most people aren't using CD-ROMs anymore. So get online. Go to PCDC and download it from there directly onto your machine. Um, a couple other differences that your developer edition versus a standard. Um, if you're like an OEM or you are doing a large scale of projects, a lot of different subsystems where you need to manage your your revisions, you need to do some type of high level monitoring. If you want to, you want to create some type of special user defined data types, some UDTs in your projects, in your code, then yeah, you might want to look at getting the developer in addition. But if you're just doing some simple, hey, I want to use some parameters on my component. I want to set it, set an IP address. I just want to do something. Excuse me. Sorry, I don't have the crown. If you want to do some simple, uh, simple programming, the standard edition will, will get you through. The so CCW is easy to program. Uh, what makes it easy to program? The Micro 800 allows you to take advantage of the Micro 800 uh, controllers. For its programming purposes, you can use ladder logic to program it. Function block diagrams, or you can use structured text. Um, if you're familiar with programming your controllers inside of the RS Logix or the Studio 5000 environment, uh, you'll find the transition to using CCW on this programming environment very comfortable, very intuitive. It's, uh, they're trying to make it as simple as a transition as it can be. On the next slide, you'll see that if you're from again, if you're familiar with the toolbars and the ASCII text input for our slices 500, 5000, you'll be familiar with it in CCW. And um, it also gives you CCW also gives you the option to use some user defined function blocks. So if there's a function block that doesn't have the exact routine or logic that you want to create. Go ahead and create it yourself. So CCW is you plenty of flexibility on that spectrum. So this is just giving you a, a picture of the programming environment for coding your controllers inside of CCW. As you can see, there's a drop down that shows that there's a theme. This theme is called Logix. So this is going to make the environment more comfortable and a little bit more intuitive for a person that is experienced with programming inside the Logix environment. As you can see, here there are some quick buttons on the toolbar that you can click if you want to add a new rung, 
add some coils, do some latching, unlatching. If you want to do some math, the loose copying, those devices are, those tools are readily available for you to click and add or click and drag. So try and make it as easy for you as possible. Easy to configure. So for those of you that are familiar with the drive, the old drive program software, Rockwell, which is called Drive Executive, you're probably already familiar with this tool called um, the Startup Wizards. So for your PowerFlex drives, if you connect your, get your drive connected on CCW, you'll have the option, excuse me, you have the option to configure your drive using the startup wizard. So what is the startup wizard? Startup wizard is basically your, your critical 25 to 30 parameters around that number that uh, are necessary for you to get your drive up and running on a simple startup, usually on a standalone system. And if it doesn't get you running on a complex system, it'll get you pretty darn close. Um, for example, I'll reset the parameters for you, get you a nice factory reset. We can set the um, your network addresses, your Ethernet IP address, your subnet. You can set your start and stop inputs, do your direction test, your tuning. So it's going to step you through all those steps for a drive startups, because let's face it, most people aren't doing these every day and by the time they become an expert you're not doing it again till years down the road and it's nice and fresh so just knowing that you have a startup wizard sitting in your bot pocket back pocket ready to get you up and going this tool is there for you so whatever you use powerflex 525 or 4m or 755t you have a startup wizard waiting for you at ccw for use So we downloaded CCW onto our machine. We connected our device. What does it look like? So when we connect to the device, in this case, connected to a drive, it's going to bring you to an overview screen. This overview screen um, is going to show you what you're connected to. So what are we connected to? In this case, we're, as you can see, the user is able to give this device a unique name. Again, nothing new if you're familiar with the logics environment. And it's showing, hey, you're connected to a PowerFlex 755 drive. What's the unique name? What voltage class and power range is this in? Is 200 volt class, it can output 4.8 amps. What's the firmware revision? And probably one of my favorite features that it offers, it shows you what peripherals um, are enabled or installed on this drive. So in this case, we have an embedded Ethernet IP port and an embedded uh, device logic port. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the PowerFlex drives world, or even the old uh, 1336 drives world, you'll know that, hey, there are sometimes there are options to add on some other devices, um, add on devices to these drives, whether that is encoder feedback, uh, 120 volt IO, extra 24 volt, 24 volt IL, auxiliary, auxiliary power feedback or auxiliary power. CCW will identify what peripheral is added to your drive and which port that is in. So let's say if you want to do some type of IBE or some type of inventory on what devices you have out in the field and what are the subcomponents that are in those devices. You can get a lot of this done just by logging on to CCW, get onto your project, and start clicking away. So it's making it, again, easier for the user to take advantage and have a see what's going on. Um, as you'll see later on in the presentation, that there is a compare button uh, that is available for you. What is the compare button? Let's say you install Again, this new drive. And before you install the new drive, you replace an old one. You copied or you did a 
in copycat or you upload the parameters from the old drive, your goal is to download the old parameters to the new one. After you do that, you might want to dot your I's and cross your T's and compare the parameters from the old drive to the new drive. You can use the compare functions to compare the old drive to the new drive, you can compare the new drive, you know, the active drive to another drive that's out on the network already and compare it to something on this file, or you can just simply compare it to the file. So any combination you can think of that you want to compare, you can do that. And then we do your compare, you can do a filter on, hey, I just want to see the parameters that are non-default that we can get uh, the more the most meaningful parameters that you want to take a peek at. Probably my favorite feature, you know, right next to the CCW PowerFlex Wizards, is the trending tool. So for the Micro 800 controllers and your PowerFlex drives, you're able to trend the data, trend the parameters on those devices. So if you wanted to trend the DC bus voltage as the speed varied on a variable frequency drive, you can do that. If you wanted to trend an analog input and a digital output on a micro 800 to see if they are corresponding correctly, you can do that. You can set that up quite easily. The, as you can see here, the project organizer will give you two options. Either you can select the device tab, which will show you all your devices, all your components, or you can show your trend tabs. If we're looking at the training tool, we'll be on the trend tabs. You can see that you can easily add a trend by clicking that green plus button. And once you add a trend, you can simply, again, it's very intuitive, you can right click, click that trend and give it an, an, a u, unique name. So you can remember what you were trending before, you can save it to your project, so it stays there. How could this be useful? Let's say you're doing some type of startup on a machine and you wanted to monitor some of the critical behaviors, let's say the DC bus voltage monitor the, the AC current. Let's see how it behaves as the drive gets older, as the motors get older, as the cables get deteriorated. You can do a trend on year one, and on year two and three, you can start setting up your preventative maintenance routine to continue to do these trends and compare how they're behaving. So you can uh, be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more proactive on your your system. You can get in a whole lot of trouble. You can do a whole lot of you can do a whole lot of things with this. And knocked all those three points off. So CCW a training tool. For those who've been using CCW for a while, this has been uh, come standard with version 12. But if somehow you are stuck on version 11, there is uh, a patch that you can download and add, which will give you that capability. But I highly recommend you just download the, the latest and greatest. And as of today, August 26, 2020, um, version 12 is which, where you need to be working with. So some trending details. How fast can you sample? You can sample up to 10 milliseconds at a time. And of course, this is gonna be depending on whether your PC can perform that. You can trigger what starts and stops your trend, whether manually, right? You can click with a mouse, or you can set up some analogs or a bit or a certain time for your trend to begin. Well, what do you do when you, once you get this data, right? Let's say you don't want it to live in CCW forever. Well, you have the option to export this data to a CSV file or a cell spreadsheet and you can start monitoring that numerically. So if you're a number cruncher, like hanging out with the accountants, you have the option to do that as well. This is just a blown up screen of what we were seeing before, showing that, hey, you have the options, right? You got some tabs that show you, hey, if you wanna switch between tabs, you can do that. And also uh, showing you 
that give you some a little bit more meaning on what you're training. So I'm showing you, hey, the, the blue line is going to be, in this case, a widget detect, which is going to be on the micro 850. And the green line, which is on the bottom, going to, it's called the, the widget. The customer, the user decided to call it in that case. You have the options to view this data, which you'll see later on the demo, uh, and different methods. You can view it either in overlay, which um, the graphs are stacked on top of each other, or you can stack them in different, basically vertical columns, so you can see what's each one will have its own individual area as it's trending. So whatever your preference is for your viewership, you can do that. Parameters, what can you do with some of these parameters? Uh, for those that are familiar, some drives have more parameters than others. And sometimes you just don't have uh, time that's not at your side, pretty much everybody, to dig through the hundreds or thousands of parameters to find what you're looking for. So CCW is making it easy for the user to find parameters quickly and accurately. How are they doing that? Well, one, you have the option to start setting up some filters. So the first filter you can set up is which port on the device you want to look at. Do you want to look on the main control board on port zero, which hosts uh, probably 80% or more of your parameters that hosts your motor nameplate data, for example? So that's going to be the first filter. The next filter, you can set up which group you want to view the parameters on. So in this case for the drive, they applied, I just want to see the motor data. The next filter you have the option of selecting is the show non defaults or to show the defaults. This is very useful because nine times out of 10, we're not interested in looking at the parameters that haven't been touched, that haven't been changed from the non default. We want to know what's been changed when we started up the drive those are probably the parameters that we are interested in viewing and controlling or changing. And then last but not least, you have the filter value. You can type in some text. For example, if I would have typed in RPM in this column, it only would have populated uh, what you see in, here in number 28 because it meets the filter of I'm in port zero, I'm in the motor data, filter. This is the, I'm in the non-defaults category, right? It's changed from the non-defaults. And it shows RPM. So since volts, amps, hertz, units, power, and poles are not RPM, it'll filter it out. So that, that makes it a pretty powerful tool for finding stuff quickly and getting a change. Rather, getting a change quickly. Device definition. Again, if you're familiar with the you know, RS Logics uh, 500, 5000, or the Studio 5000 world, device definition plays hand in hand. You're able to see what type of device you're dealing with. You can give it this name here. You can give it a brief description uh, to help the person ahead of you. Uh, next time inside the troubleshoot, they can see what this device is for, what it's controlling. You can view or set the firmware, and then you can also view uh, what the power rating is, or if it isn't installed yet, you can say, hey, it's going to be this type of rating. So this is where you define what that device is. And then the catalog. This is just a big picture of what we've been talking about since slide number two is presentation. These are the, uh, this would be the catalog of devices you can add on to project organizer. So you'll see your micro 800s on the controllers. You'll see your Connect 3 and your PowerFlex drives under the drives tabs. You'll have your safety components, such as your light curtains, your motor control devices, such as your SMC soft starts, and your graphic terminals, such as your PanelView 800s. You can go to the catalog um, item, double click, add it to your project if you want to go with that route. If you have a device that's already on your project, you can copy and paste it and add it again and give it a different name. 
So again, they're making it easier for you to program, configure, program, configure, uh, and monitor your, your devices. Then stop, demo time. Give me a haha in the comments if you, uh, if you get the joke. I'm trying to keep it light. Wrapping it up here. I'm going to give you a, a brief demo on a CCW. Uh, this is going to be a video demo, just basically reviewing what uh, we've been discussing. And then after that, we'll conclude with some questions. So in this demo, everything is going to be based off of CCW version 12 with PowerFlix 525. As you know, since we're connecting through these devices over Ethernet through your computer, you're going to have to give these devices an IP address. You can do this through hitting a keypad, and doing it electronically if it's, that device has that capability. If it has a set of rotary switches, you can set a stack IP address by doing that. Or you can simply use the boot P tool if the device comes out the box, like the PowerFlex 525 with Boot P, you use your Boot P tool um, and set the IP address uh, that way in your subnet. So now that we have the, the drive has the IP address, we'll go to discover and define the path on how we're going to connect to that drive. So however you got how we're going to connect to the drive to define the path, drill down, and you click OK. After you click OK, you're going to see that green bar that says, hey, you're connected to this device. You have the option to do add that to the project. So it's going to take it. From the right, upload parameters and put in the project organizer to the left of your screen. So now you got a project. So how do we configure it? Again, we talked about the wizard before. Um, take a look on how you can simply configure your drive using the CCW startup wizard. Click start, drill through, and after you go through all those steps. At the end, it'll show you the pending changes so you can see what changes you made at the end. Take a screenshot of that, save it for your notes, email it to yourself. The next part is going to be showing you how to compare the parameters like we discussed before. In this case, it's going to compare the active files to uh, the active drive and its parameters to a file that was previously saved before that he has on this on this PC in this documents folder. Again, now he's going to move on towards the parameter section. And when the drive's online, it'll show you his current, his current parameter value. So as the bus voltage is changing, um, the parameter is going to adjust. Here he's showing the different filters that you can apply. And then if you wanted to export these or print them, you have the option to do that as well. The next part is going to show you how to create a trend for your drive and what that'll look like for you. The same way that you'll trend on the drive will be the same way that you'll trend on different components. Just like that, he was able to go to that one device, 
check, he can check off which boxes he wants to uh, trend, and each one of those check boxes that's going to be uh, a trend, be a trace. So he has three traces on this trend for that one device. CCW, you're up. You're able to trend up to ten minutes at a time. This is showing you that you have the option to either view them um, as an overlay or you can stack them. And then you can pause the time and click and drag to see what that value is numerically. And in summary, it's more of a powerful 525 pitch. You can again configure the IP address using the BP tool. The wizards are there available for you. Thank you. This concludes the Connect Components Workbench introduction. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat box or send us an email at Mac and Mac Live at Mac, Mac and Mac .com. Standing by for you, Rachel. That was great. Thank you, Gino. We did have one question come through in the comments as you were presenting. And um, the commenter just wanted to know if you were using the CCW Basic. Stuart did respond that, um, you know, there's the standard and the developer version, uh, but was what you covered applicable to both? What I cover is applicable to both. We didn't use any of the features that are and the developer edition. Great. That is wonderful. As Gino mentioned, you can always send your questions to the email address there on the screen, Mac and Mac Live at macandmac.com. We will give just a moment here in case you have any follow-up questions for Gino. Um, thank you, Gino, for this great presentation. Thank you to the viewers today for tuning in with us. And thank you, Stuart, for being our resource out in the comment section. And with that, we will go ahead and wrap up today. I encourage you to go out and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more industry content like this. And we will see you again live next week. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.